Hey, Jeff with Mastery Medics here. Thank you so much for checking out this video on the mechanics of breathing. We're going to be talking about the inhalation and exhalation process, how the body actually makes that work in order to make it nice and fluid, make it easier for the, the body to breathe. So that way you again, don't struggle to breathe on a regular basis. So we're going to talk about that here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. So that way you get notifications of all of our new videos here on YouTube. And uh, yeah, and so we can see you next time as well. Let's get into it. for breathing. So the mechanics themselves are, are quite interesting in order to create what we need to create here. And so what we have here is essentially the, uh, it's very a mechanical process in order to create what we need here. And so like we said, we had two big things. I'm going to change the color because there's a little bit of red here that I don't, I don't want you to miss these pieces here. So remember we have this muscle, okay, underneath the lungs like so. Okay, and this muscle again is called the diaphragm. Okay, like that. And then we also have, okay, we have these ribs, okay, across like this. They're kind of shadowed in this picture. And then from in between those ribs, we have those intercostal muscles. Okay, those intercostal muscles sit just like that within the ribs or under or in between the ribs, I should say that allow for again flexion and allows for those ribs to expand and allows for the pressures within the lungs and around the lungs to change in order to draw air in. Okay. And you might go, okay, how does that happen? How does this actually happen itself? Okay. Well, basically one thing you need to understand from this before we move on to inspiration and expiration and how that occurs is that air and uh, pressure always wants to try and correct itself or go to a lesser amount in order to equalize itself out. By that I mean is that actual air within the atmosphere itself, okay, within the atmosphere itself is 760 millimeters of mercury, okay, 700 millimeter or 760 millimeters of mercury of pressure himself okay and then we have this pressure within the lungs okay within the functional part of the lungs this is also when we are at a standstill so when i breathe out okay i breathe out i've kind of finished my expiration then then what we have here is actually another pressure and that pressure is going to be equal to the atmosphere pressure which is going to be 760 Okay, this pressure here within the lungs, I'm just gonna bring this over here so I can write it out. That pressure is called the intrapulmonary pressure. Intrapulmonary pressure. That intrapulmonary pressure is going to come in, into play when it comes to inspiration and expiration. And this 760 is gonna come into play as well. So these are two things you should put in your notes uh, as two big things as the basics of mechanics of breathing is these two things. Intrapulmonary pressure at standstill is 160 millimeters of mercury and as well as atmospheric pressure is 760 as well, okay? So from there, let's go into our inspiration and expiration. So I want to get a better color. Doo, 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 doo. So we know that atmospheric pressure, I'm just going to put that up here, is 760 60 millimeters of mercury. During inspiration, okay, remember this intrapulmonary pressure here, during inspiration we're going to have that diaphragm is going to flex. And when that diaphragm flexes, it basically flexes down. And by flexing down, it allows for those lungs to expand. And that means that these intercostal muscles here are also going to flex, again, allowing the ribs to expand. When you do this, when you inspire and create that opening of area, it's actually going to decrease your intrapulmonary pressures. Remember, intrapulmonary pressure sits at the same as atmospheric pressure at 760. By flexing that diaphragm and by flexing those intercostal muscles to expand those rims is actually going to decrease it to 759 millimeters of mercury. And just one point, okay, one point of pressure 
is going to allow for oxygen that's in the atmosphere to rush in to these lungs in order to try to normalize that pressure that we have. Okay, it wants to get the atmospheric pressure and our intrapulmonary pressure is the same. So as O2 rushes in, it's going to again normalize this number back to 760. Okay, that's how we force or encourage oxygen from the atmosphere to get into the lungs by decreasing our intrapulmonary pressure by one in order to force or encourage O2 and atmospheric air to rush into the lungs because it wants to try and normalize atmospheric air and intrapulmonary air as the same. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're manipulating that air to come to us by dropping pressures within the lungs. Okay, so from that, then we're going to have the other process, the expiration process. And remember that diaphragm is here, okay? At the beginning of expiration, it's going to now relax, which means the diaphragm is going to actually enclose or creep on the lungs themselves. Those intercostal muscles are going to relax, allowing for the ribs to start to come closer to the lungs, actually closing that pulmonary cage or that rib cage themselves, meaning that there's less room for the lungs to expand. And what that's going to do is that it's actually going to increase our intrapulmonary pressures and it's going to increase it to 761. Okay, it's going to increase at that. And so now we have too much pressure compared to atmospheric pressure. So what that does is that it forces the air that's inside our lungs out. Because again, it wants to normalize itself to the pressure here in the atmosphere during expiration. And then when we're at the standstill, when we're not inspiring or expiring at all, then we have an intrapulmonary pressure the same as atmospheric pressure at 760. Okay, but this is simply what we're doing. Is we're simply manipulating pressures a little bit in order to inspire Okay, creating more room within the lungs, which means that, that we're dropping that pressure. Okay, if there's more room in there, it means that there's less pressure inside the lungs, which means that we drop our pressure down to 159, allowing for air to rush in. And then when we are done with that air, we collapse. Okay, we collapse the diaphragm, we collapse those rib, that rib cage, increasing the pressure, because the less room, the more pressure against the walls of things, means that we increase our pressure just above atmospheric air, forcing air out. That's your mechanics of inspiration and expiration.